We're ready now to look at the interpreter function. So it's going to take an expression, A, uh, a list of symbols paired with classes and classes, uh, a value for this and a value for arg. And because it's going to be helpful to call and interp with these things that are often along for the ride, classes, this, and arg, uh, we'll just define a little helper function recur to do that. Because, for example, plus e to interpret left and right uh, can just recur, passing along the same objects, um, so I mean the same classes, and the same this and arg. Uh, num e, as always, just returns a num v. This e can just return this val that's passed in, and arg e can return arg val. So the interesting parts are when we look at the new ones, uh, including the new expression. With a new, we have a class name, and we have a list of field expressions. Um, so for the class name, we can use that with find to go find a class in our list of classes. And with the expressions, well, of course, we should interp all of them. So we can just map recur over that list of expressions, and we get back a list of values. So now we've got a class, and we've got a list of values. Um, what we want to create is an object with the class name and the values. So we haven't needed this class C yet, because the object just keeps the class name tagged to it. Um, but finding it makes sure that we've written a valid class name. And also we need to make sure that this class has the same number of fields as we have field expressions here. So we can uh, do a check here. We can make sure the length of the vowels that we computed matches the length of the fields that the, the class C uh, has in it. And uh, as long as that matches up, then we return our object. Otherwise, uh, there's a wrong field count error. Let's look at get. Get has an expression for the object and then a name for a field. Uh, this is an expression, so we should interpret. And after we interpret, we hope that we get an object back. So we do a type case and look for object v. If it is an object v, then we have a class name and we have the field values. So we have to find the field name, uh, which of these field values correspond to that name. That information is in the class. So we uh, go find the class uh, in our list of class declarations. Uh, do a type case on that, which will always be a class c. And that has the field names in it. So this field names is in parallel to these field values, and we are looking for the one that's called field name. Um, so that's what we've got to work with right now. Uh, the names are parallel to the values. Uh, we don't have a function right now that does a find uh, on these two parallel lists, but we can just take the list and put them together in tuples with values, uh, and then we can use find on that. All right, so we're mapping values over the list of field names and values to get the usual sort of list of tuples that finds expects, and then looking for the field name, and we should get one of those values, and that's exactly what, uh, what get is supposed to do. To send an object to method, again, we have two expressions, so we should interpret those expressions. Uh, the first one hopefully gives us an object back, and the second one gives us any kind of argument that we're passing to the object. To make sure it's an object, we do a type case, um, and if it is an object v, we'll have a class name and a field, uh, field values. And the class name is relevant because that's where we're going to go look to find the method name. This is the dynamic part of a dynamic method send. We had to go evaluate the object expression to get an object and look inside that object at runtime to find out what class has the method. We're going to defer most of the rest of this to a, a helper function call method where we give it the class name that it should look for and the method name that it looks for and the list of class declarations so it knows where to look and then pass along the object and the argument and let call method finish this up. And the reason we do that is because send and send are going to have a lot in common. But let's go look at that helper function right away. Uh, that function takes the class name and the class method and the method name again. So we uh, look for the class. Uh, we type case on that. It's definitely going to be a class C with some field names and methods. This list of methods is where we want to look for that method name. So we just do another find on methods. That gives us the body expression of the method. So uh, let's just call that body expert. And that is what we want to interpret. So when you call a method, you evaluate or interpret the body of the method. We need to pass along the classes in case the body does a new or uh, a static send where it needs to look up a class. Uh, and then, of course, we pass the object. Right? We are calling a method of this object, so that object becomes the new this. And we were calling the method passing along this argument value, so we pass that along to inter. That leaves us with static send. Uh, static send is a lot like regular send at first. We have two expressions that we need to interpret, so we do that. Hopefully we get an object back. If 
but we don't actually need to check uh, that it's an object right now because we don't need the class name. Uh, we don't have to dynamically look inside this object to find what the class name is. Instead, for a static send, the class name is given directly. So we can go straight to call method with the class name and the method name.